God's story, John the Baptist. So part of God's story is about a man we call John the Baptist, and it begins like this. Hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus was ever born, a man named Isaiah wrote that somebody would come to prepare people for Jesus' arrival. He was talking about a guy named John the Baptist. Well, actually, his name was John. We call him the Baptist because he baptized a lot of people. Anyway, before John was even born, an angel appeared to his dad and said, Do not be afraid, Zachariah. Your wife Elizabeth will have a child. It will be a boy, and you must name him John. He will be important in the Lord's eyes. John was important because he would get people ready for Jesus, who was coming to rescue us. Did we mention that John was Jesus' cousin? Pretty crazy, huh? Well, right from the beginning, John was a bit unusual. For starters, he spent the first part of his life in the wilderness. Maybe he slept on the ground and used rocks for pillows. Maybe he brushed his teeth with sticks. Maybe he used leaves as toilet paper. We don't know. All the Bible tells us is that he stayed in the desert until he started telling people about Jesus. Then, when he came back into civilization, he still seemed strange. He wore clothes made out of camel's hair and a leather belt. Imagine how itchy hairy clothes must have been. And for food, he ate locusts dipped in honey, just like he had eaten in the desert. You know what a locust is? It's a grasshopper. But don't worry, you don't have to eat bugs to follow Jesus. Anyway, John didn't come back from the desert to live like everybody else. He came back to teach people about Jesus. So he started telling everybody that God loves us so much, he's sending his own son to rescue us. This made a lot of people want to follow God and his son, Jesus. So John began baptizing them. That's how he got his nickname. Kids, baptism is what we do when we decide to tell everybody that we're following Jesus. While John was baptizing and teaching, some people thought he might be the rescuer. He seemed really smart, and he knew a lot about God. But John knew he needed Jesus to rescue him, just like everybody else. So he said, someone who is more powerful than I am will come. I'm not good enough to untie the straps of his sandals. John was making a point by talking about Jesus' feet. See, back then, everyone's feet were almost always dirty because they wore sandals, stepped in dust and camel poop, and didn't have showers. So when John said he wasn't good enough to untie Jesus' sandals, he was basically saying that he would feel lucky if he could help Jesus with his dirty feet. That's how much John loved Jesus. Well, even though John told everybody about Jesus, he was actually waiting for the rescue too. Then one day, he was baptizing people in the Jordan River. Jesus came to the shore and asked John to baptize him. Kids, remember how John thought he'd be lucky to help Jesus clean his feet? John didn't think he was good enough to baptize Jesus, but Jesus told John to do it. And when John baptized Jesus, something really special happened. The Holy Spirit came down from heaven like a dove, and God actually said out loud, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. The Bible says that heaven opened up and John got to be a part of that with Jesus, all because he had given his whole life to follow him. And that's the story of John the Baptist. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. John was an important part of God's story. He was Jesus's cousin. He lived in the desert. He ate bugs. He told people Jesus was coming. He baptized people who wanted to follow God. He got to baptize Jesus. John followed Jesus his whole life. And that's a part of God's story. Hey, okay.
Chicken Nuggets, it's me Carl. Welcome to Grow TV. Welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Carl. Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now once again, welcome to Grow TV. So just in case you're wondering, yes, I am still stuck in a museum. Long story short, I went to the museum when it was closed. See, I didn't know it was closed, but it was. And now I'm stuck in here all day. Can you believe that? Well now, I gotta find something to do. Maybe I should explore a new part of this museum. It's really big, and there's so much I can learn. Let's go. All right, now we are in the aquatic part of the museum. If it lives in the water, we're gonna learn about it. I mean, what else am I gonna do? That? Well, I could. No. Well, no. Well, eh. Let's learn. Oh, neato! I get to pick what I want to learn about first. Hmm. Let's go with whales. Not many people know that the blue whale is the largest animal to ever live on Earth. Holy moly! The blue whale's heart weighs as much as a car, and their tongue as much as an elephant. That's insane! Let's trash sharks. There are more than 500 species of sharks. And while sharks are as old as the dinosaurs, they are still more active than ever. Oh, and they also don't have any bones. That is terrifying. Let's check out the turtles. Green sea turtles have a more plant-based diet and eat seagrass. By keeping seagrass short, they prevent it from getting tall and harming other sea creatures. Wow. They're like lawnmowers in the ocean. Sea turtles can also hold their breath for over five hours at a time and live up to 100 years old. <laughs> Wowzers, that's just incredible. Thank you, Mrs. Voiceover Museum Woman. You're welcome. Wait, you can hear me? Of course I can hear you. Wow, I thought you were just a robot. Nope. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, so where are you from? Yeah, I'm gonna leave now. Oh, okay, cool, bye. That was awkward. I heard that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Didn't mean it. Wait. Hi, Andy. Carl, what's up, man? Nothing. Did you know turtles are lawnmowers? Um, no. No. Well, they are, and it's pretty cool. I love the ocean. Water is so cool. When was water invented? It's gotta be new, right? Uh, no. Water's been around for a while, Carl. Well, agree to disagree. But I do think there's something special about water. Oh, for sure. I mean, even water was a big part of John the Baptist's story. Wait, the locust and honey guy? What did he do with water? Well, we could take a look at the book of John in chapter 3. It was at this time John the Baptist wanted to share a very important message. Oh, a very important message. I wonder what it could be. Well, the thing was, during this time, a lot of people started to talk. Talk? Talk about what? They began to talk about how maybe John the Baptist was the actual Messiah. What? Really? They thought John the Baptist was the son of God? Our Savior? What happened? Well, John spoke to the people and he told them, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come. The straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Whoa, so he was telling them and preparing them for Jesus? How cool is that? But what about... What? I don't know, but for some reason when you said the word baptize, it made me think of the water stuff we were talking about. Right, and that makes sense because guess what happened next? John the Baptist jumped into a macaroni rocket ship and flew away to the moon? No. Oh, bummer. Hmm. Well, what happened? Well, Jesus came to the river where John was, and it was time for Jesus to do something super cool. Can you guess what that was? Jesus jumped into a macaroni rocket ship and went to the- Carl? What? Jesus could do anything. I just figured he could. Jumped into a macaroni rocket ship and fly to the moon. Exactly. So did he? No. Fine. So what did Jesus do that was so much more important? He got baptized. <gasps> Right? Jesus got baptized, and then he began to pray. And guess what happened while Jesus was praying? Jesus jumped in I don't know, Andy. What did happen? The heavens opened up, the Holy Spirit came down to Jesus, and God spoke. What did God say? God said, you are my son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. That is so cool. God spoke. Right? And that's so important to remember. God always speaks, but it is up to us to listen. Wow, I guess that's true.
Hey there kids, today's big idea is we can hear God's voice if we listen. So let's say it out loud on the count of three. One, two, three. We can hear God's voice if we listen. Great job everyone. I loved getting to listen to today's story. What about you, Carl? Huh? I said I loved getting to- Just kidding, I heard you. Oh no, I made Jada angry, watch out. <laughs> she might get all green and start smashing things. Ah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Jada. See you later, kids! Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of Pro TV! Jeremiah 29, verse 13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Jeremiah 29 verse 13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Oh.